أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد برسل استسلم الإسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we are still alive after this time we are very fortunate Allah has given us no respite, not because of anything, but to test me and you to see what are we going to do. A lot of people had gone to the grave beyond, but we are still alive. This is the greatest opportunity for me and you now, so that you make use of it before it is too late. Alhamdulillah, we were praying very hard to witness the month of Ramadan and Alhamdulillah we are able to see it by this time but we do not know if you finish it or not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best but we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and make us to be able to finish the month of Ramadan well, brothers and sisters, there are some people who are not lucky, that means unfortunate ones. One of them is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him long life, he is still asking for more. Instead of making use of it, he does not do it. And this is the situation that you have nowadays. When you become sick, you are praying, you are crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, please make me become better and so on and so forth. But when you become better, that kind of strength Allah gives to us, what do we do with it? Do we really use it to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we really use it to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or what actually do we do with it? Sometimes you use it in a very wrong way. And the second one, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases him in his wealth and the properties. But the more he gets, the more miser he becomes. And that also is another thing that we should not let this thing happen have to make use of it before it is too late. Our deen is so important to us. You must make use of it. Allah has blessed us to be Muslims. You are very lucky to be Muslims. But it is not easy to die as a Muslim pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you should be pleased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to us. No alayhi salam, when he calls his people, he at the end told them very important thing. When he told, and he said, Oh Allah, in thumma inni da'atukum jihara, then I have called my people openly, publicly. Thumma inni alan to love, and then I proclaim to them that there is no one to worship except you in the public. Wa asrar to lahum israra. And I also spoke to them secretly one by one, and yet still they did not listen. What did Nuh alayhi salam tell the people? Fakul to staghfiru rabbakum innahu kana ghafara. That's what Nuh alayhi salam told the people. He said, I said to them, Seek forgiveness of your Lord. Because your Lord is most often forgiving. In other words, Allah forgives you more and more. If you do not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgiveness, Allah becomes angry with you. Therefore, a believer, you should always ask forgiveness. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants likewise you are the, the dua that you make. So here, Nuh alayhi salam told them they must ask forgiveness from their Lord. What is the main aim and what will be the result of asking forgiveness all the time? One, yursil sama alaykum midirara. When you are in need of rain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down rain upon you in abundance. A lot, you will get a lot of rain coming to you. And the next thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase you in your wealth. So if you get, you want to get more money, more property, more wealth, make a lot of istighfar. Wabaneen and the children. You want to get more children, you want your children to be on the right path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most of all. You will get that one. Everything that you are doing, it will become good for you. وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for you gardens. وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْحَارًا And you make also for you rivers. So you may have gardens, your gardens, the fruits, your produce, everything, it will come more and more for you. And the rivers you may get. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks a question. مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارًا Then what's the matter of you that you fear not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his punishment and you hope not for reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Now وَقَدْ خَلَقَكُمْ أَقْوَارًا Whereas you know that Allah created me and you in a different stages. Different stages, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. Now, one of the alim, a man came to him and he said, Oh, pray for me so that I can get more wealth. I'm very poor and so forth. He said, Go and ask forgiveness. Go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask him forgiveness all the time. Another one also said, came, and he said, I do not have children. I have been married for a long time, I don't have children, so please pray for me. He said, go and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. This one said, I want, when I have something in my mind, my knowledge, it does not stay, it just goes. It's very difficult for me to remember. He said, go and ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the people who were sitting in the assembly, they said, well, how come that? All these people who came, everybody came with different things and so forth. This one said he was sick, and he wants you to pray for him. And yet, you told him to go and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Everybody you told him, he said yes. He said, because when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, sometimes, there are things that you do not get because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had withheld something that you have done, wrong thing. And due to that, he had deprived you from something. So if you go back to him and ask forgiveness, and he accepts that forgiveness from you, then that time, that way will be open for you. So that is what a believer should do. Now, we are in the last part of the month of Ramadan. That is the greatest part of all. This is where you have to tighten our belt all the time, making a lot of zikr. Because it is the part that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects and saves his servants <coughs> from the hell fire. From the hellfire. So you must make sure you do a lot of istighfar, seeking forgiveness, prayers, and so forth.
Now everybody wants to get Laylatul Qadr to make sure that Allah, oh please provide, let him be among those people who will see Laylatul Qadr so that all my sins will be forgiven and so forth. But if you want to, the first thing you have to bear in mind is you must believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first thing that is the Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Iman should not be any kind of shaking Iman. It must be very strong and firm Iman. The next aspect is you must have a Sadiq with that. You must be truthful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is something which is also very important. In the time of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa a man came to accept Islam. And when he accepted Islam, he was sitting down and this man was crying and so forth. So people asked him, why are you, you said that, crying? You have accepted Islam, you are very happy, you should be happy now, and so forth. He said, I have become a Muslim now. But I wish that I can die as a martyr. That I go to the battlefield and the arrow it goes into my throat and comes back at the back of my neck. So when he said that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was there, then he left. Prophet Sallallahu had said if what he said is true with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah also will become will be truthful to him. It wasn't long they had a battle, he went to the battlefield, and after the battle, they were looking for the Muslims, the, the martyrs, and among them was the same man. They came to Prophet Muhammad and said, Muslim for Allah, this man who accepted Islam and so forth, he had he got to the battlefield and he died. First of all, said, he died, he said, how did he die? How did you find him? He said, you find that an arrow had gone through his throat and came back at his neck. Professor Sama said, yes. He was truthful to Allah and Allah also had come truthful to him. SubhanAllah. You see, so when we come to to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our actions and deeds and so forth, Allah also come to to us. And whatever thing we need, we get it. He didn't pray, not even one salat, but he went to Al Jannah. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted him. Why? Because he was truthful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> And thirdly, if you want to see Laylatul Qadr, you must know the benefits and the value of Laylatul Qadr. Knowing the benefits and value of Laylatul Qadr, it means that is the night in which that particular night is like better than the whole of your life the actions, the deeds that you have done. Imagine it's a three years and four months. How many of us are going to live up to that? And how many of us, even if we live up to that one, can you do a ibadah that is being pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But that night, and the person who does this, he or she, if you are lucky to get it, it is better for, for you than all the acts of worship that you have done for 83 years and four months. SubhanAllah. So that is one of the things you have to bear in mind. You must know the virtue of it. That the angels, they descend, and according to the Prophet all the angels descend and they become more than the gravels on the earth. Imagine. They, are, they become more than the gravels on the earth. So there's no any place without any angel. 
And they start from where? From Maghrib time. Immediately the sun sets, that is the time they descend. And they go on until Hatta Matullah in Fajr. Until Fajr time comes. Some places, especially in Africa and other places, oh, they said, you are going to observe the light of color, you are going to appear and so forth. What do they do? They go there, you know, like a party. They will stay there and so forth. And some of them, they stay until up to 3 o'clock, and then everybody goes home. I said, I have observed the light of color. SubhanAllah. This day, Salam will be a Hatta Matullah Il Fajr. They are there seeking peace and tranquility and forgiveness and everything for you. And that is the time Allah also comes closer, asking, is there anyone who needs anything? And I will fulfill the need of that person for you. All right. Until Fajr time. And if you live before Fajr time, how can you get that kind of a blessing? So you must make sure that you do this. And it says salam. It means when you are observing Laylatul Qadr at any time, you must be peaceful. You must be peaceful. As the Professor Hassan had said, there are some people whose dua are not being answered. It does not even reach the top of among them the people who quarrels a lot. The people who do not talk to each other. The people who make a lot of problems. And these people, the, even their dua, it does not even reach uh, on top of their heads. And the one who is disobedient to his parents, undutiful to his parents, unkind to his parents. The same thing about that. The blessings Allah is giving to us all the time. He does not stop. You finish Ramadan, the first Allah had said, whosoever fasts the month of Ramadan and follows it with six days in Shawwal, you get the reward as if you have fasted for the whole year. SubhanAllah, look at the mercy of Allah. You do little and he gives you more. Allahu Akbar. And six, uh, six days in the month of Shawwal, you do not need, it's not necessary that you have to do all of them in sequence. No. The most important thing is to get six days in the month of Shawwal. So you can fast today, and after two or three days, you fast another one. After two days or three days, you fast another one. The most important thing is to finish fasting for the six days in that month, in Shawwal. But when can I start to fast? You can start to fast after the read. After the read, you can start to fast. No, you want it. And the blessing in it is so great that you can never ever, nobody should miss that one. And sometimes the place will come to you and say, oh, all right, inshallah, we still have more days, maybe 29 days more, inshallah, it's a bit by bit, until later on, the day you go, I want to say, oh, today I don't think I feel, I feel well, at all. inshallah, let me leave it. The next time we found that Shawwal had finished, I couldn't get it, and you could not get it. So, the, the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not stop only in the month of Ramadan, it continues all the time, because He is the most forgiving, most merciful, and He is most bountiful. Everything that He did, Allah has prepared for us. <coughs> Now, on the day, what shall we do? So many times, the crucial time that we have to ask forgiveness. The companions, no matter some of them, when you are making 
Salat Tahajjud, they will ask another person. Whenever the time coming for the school time, he said, tell me to stop. Why? Because he said, we will ask her, whom? When Allah was describing the believers, the God-fearing people, who had given them a Jannah, he said because they used to seek forgiveness during this whole time. Because that is the time Allah becomes more closer. But so many times that is the time we like to talk too much. <laughs> you know? That's the time you talk too much. Even if you finish eating, that's the time you are going to talk to many things and so on and so forth. Instead of sitting in one place and cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Making a lot of dua. Because your dua is very, very important. Nothing changes the qadr, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except dua. Inna dua. So you must make a lot of du'a. And the du'a also you make, it is not only, Oh Allah, please help me to get this and so on and so forth, and you finish. No. In Allah, you need ilhah with du'a, ilhah, taqreer. You continue. Oh Allah. That's why Prophet Sallallahu whenever he makes even du'a, at least he makes it about three times, isn't it? At least. <coughs> because in Allah, you need ilhah. He wants you to do a takra. You continue. Oh Allah, please forgive me. Give me this. Oh Allah, please forgive me. Oh Allah, please forgive me. Oh Allah, please. You know, it's like a child. When you, as a parent, your child comes to you and the child needs something. And it's for you. Oh please, mom. Oh please, dad. Please forgive me. Please, I want this. Oh please, but you can say, okay, all right, all right, okay. <laughs> you submit. But if the child comes once and says, oh dad, I want this one, and then he goes, you don't care. But if when the child is holding your, you know, your, your, your garment and pleading to you, kind and so forth, you say, okay, okay. You see these things when you are in the market or some other places, you see the child will see something, maybe a sweet or whatever, and wants mom to buy for The child will hold mom like this. Please, mom, I want this. You said, no, I don't have money. Let's leave it. But the child would say, he said, okay, all right. But look, this is the last one, eh? you know. So. <laughs> but why? Because the child continued asking and asking. Therefore, the mother gave. The mother gave. Even though the mother was not quite the mother gave. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made us to make dua, but the dua continue. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cry unto him. Oh, I don't have anyone, no ilah except you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And cry and cry. For that, you will see at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open that door for you. Allah will open that door for you. And you will say, wow. Maybe you did not have it. But you see, Allah will send somebody to you that you will not even know who that person is. And by praying in the night is so important. It makes your face become bright. Okay? Especially the ladies who want to put makeup on. Sometimes when they finish, they don't want to do make down, they don't want to make center and so forth. If you want your face to become bright, Pray in the night. Pray a lot in the night. You get the nur. Why? Because you have confined yourself in the place in darkness, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al basaka bin nur. Allah also will put that kind of cloth of light for you. So everywhere you go to, people just like you. They don't even know you. And they just like you. They see the new on your face. The whole part of you. So this is something we have to try to do it. Praying tahajjud and also praying salatul duha. 
So a lot of Dover is it is not compulsory, but it's very good. Abu Huraira he said, My friend, referring to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, awsani bi salat. Admonish me and advise me to do three things. And I shall not leave them until I die. Three things. <coughs> to fast three days in every month. Three days. To fast three days in every month. That is one. Okay? And also to get up in the night and pray while the people are asleep. Okay? And the third one, to make uh, what is called uh, you make your witchery before you go to sleep. That is well known. To perform two rakats of salatul duha. Two rakats. This is of the qualities of the true believers. So you should try as much as possible. When you are going to sleep, if you haven't performed your witcher, try to perform it. Even though you want to get up in the night and pray, tahajjud, make sure that before you go to sleep, you pray your witcher. Why? Because it will help you, should in case you oversleep, you do not worry about it, isn't it? You have already prayed. But if Allah bless you also to wake up, you pray only two rakars, two in twos. Every two rakars, you say salam alaikum. Every two rakars, you say salam alaikum. You do not repeat the witcher again. You don't repeat the witcher. All what you have to do is to pray only two rakars, two rakars, two rakars. Any amount that you want, mashallah, you pray. Okay. So this is something we should try. Because when you, you fast three days in every month, as if you have fasted for the whole year, the reward you gain. This is why we have to try as much as possible to do that kind of ibadah. <coughs> so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May Allah make us among those people who listen to his words and put it into practice. And don't forget to pray for your parents. Don't let your parents die before you want to somebody to go and pray for them. Say, oh, now I'm going to do a 40 days anniversary or whatever you may call it and so on and so forth. You know, I'll have to buy a big cow for... Uh, in order to make that kind of a thing so people will come and so forth. Some people, they, even the parents there, they did not even eat even a chicken. They don't even go and, and, and buy chicken for them to eat. But when they die, that's the time they say they are going to buy a cow. A big cow. Okay. And especially if they are from uh, abroad, one cow is not enough. I have to. Some people, they even go to borrow money. They borrow money from maybe from England in order to go there to show off instead of because the neighbor he killed one cow when his dad half a distance died or whatever so he wants to go and kill three cows to show off whereas when he was alive he did not even kill a chicken for him when he gets a chicken he said some places even they hardly even get chicken to eat <laughs> yeah. So let us try as much as possible to do something good. Because as you do, for that you do for your parents and so forth, when your children also come, they also continue to do that thing for you. They continue to do that thing for you. So let us try and do good deeds before it is too late. Uh, today, as you are well on. Uh, Aware well, of today will be the 29th, isn't it? 29th yes. night, isn't it? That's right. Good, inshallah. So that is one of months of the Latin pattern. So you do not quarrel and so forth. <coughs> it is not. If you want to observe the Latin pattern, don't quarrel with anybody. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during his time, 
He saw the letter pattern and he came to inform the companions about it and so on and so forth. When he came and sat on the member to speak, he found two people quarreling and fighting in, the mass, in his mask. So he became so busy with these people and so on and so forth until he even forgot how it was showing to him and how and where and how and so on and so forth. Professor Nassama said, I came to inform you about the little pattern, how to do this, how to find it, exact time and everything and so forth. And when I came, I saw I met people fighting for and I even, it made me to forget how it is. Look, you see how bad it is. Just quarrel, right there and so forth. Something which is so important like this, it made Professor Nassama even to forget. So you should not fight, you should not quarrel, and so forth. It is only peace and peace. Salam on here, Hatta. That is only peace. Please. May Allah bless you all. So you can go to the next uh, part and prepare ourselves, inshallah. Today is uh, 9 12, you know, 9 12, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.